I don't know why, but I bought a diner. <laughs> what is my idea of perfect happiness? My greatest fear. Bring it on. <laughs> my hair is starting to thin out a little and starting to get a pot belly and half of me doesn't work. <laughs> This program is made possible with support from Stevens Home Improvement Company, changing home improvements, and by MenuJoy.com. We show restaurant menus. You browse, you decide. What is your full name? Phil Paleologus. Where have you lived, past and present? I lived in about 10 different states growing up, from South Carolina to uh, Jamestown, New York, from Canton, Ohio, to Tulsa, Oklahoma, New York City, to Hot Springs, Arkansas, Charlottesville, Virginia, Boston, New Bedford, a lot of places. <laughs> what have been your occupations, past and present? Um, I've always been in radio. I got in radio when I was 16 years old in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and uh, pretty much maintained you know, uh, a finger in broadcasting throughout my years. And uh, then a midlife crisis occurred, and I started selling jewelry for a short while when uh, my wife was pregnant with our first. And uh, about two years after that, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but I bought a diner. <laughs> And uh, a lot of people say, well, why did you do that? And um, I think it was because of my heavy drinking at the time. What have been your hobbies, past and present? Well, I don't have really a hobby like tennis or perhaps, you know, woodwork or anything of that nature. You know, when you think of a hobby, you think of those things. What I love doing, though, is promoting causes that help people. It's not a hobby though, it's a, something, it's a passion of mine. And uh, I decided very early on, if I had time to maybe go out and sail a little, or uh, perhaps, you know, on the tennis court or in golf, I would best use that time to serve others. So that's what I decided, and I really didn't pick up a hobby. Uh, although, as a teenager, I liked woodwork. I liked uh, working with a jigsaw. And uh, then, you know, once in a great while, when the kids were younger, I loved going fishing with them. So you might, if there's any one thing I can say is I love fishing with the family, now the grandchildren. What is my idea of perfect happiness? Hmm. I don't think there is perfect anything. Um, I have found that life is made up of imperfections and many, many times it takes a lot of failure, it takes a lot of mistakes uh, to just come back and try again. Perfect happiness, I would say the closest that I could get to happiness is to make sure that I know where my proper place is in life, meaning the Lord is first, then I come after that as the father of my family, my family, work, friends, so on. When somebody says, well, what is your idea of perfect happiness? Happiness is something that I share with others when I give. So if there's any way to define happiness, it's when I share with others, when I can be of service to others, and when I'm in alignment with all the things that I should be doing and the way I should be living. That's how I would uh, define happiness, but I don't think there's anything close to perfect happiness, unless I was a Buddhist monk. <laughs> My greatest fear, to be honest with you, I don't fear too much. 
because I have, I understand what my role is in life. And I understand why I'm here. And uh, if anything should jeopardize my safety or whatnot, I know what comes after this life. Uh, I know that possessions, material-wise, uh, are just like renting something. They're really not mine. So I don't have a, a real fear. I don't have a fear of losing. I don't have a fear of dying. I don't have a fear of, you know, th those kinds of things. What I don't like to see is, you know, when a child is taken because of cancer, or, you know, when our own grandchildren are perhaps in a car accident or somebody's children are, are hurt in some way. You know, things like that, I don't fear them, I don't like them, but they're part of life. I don't think I have a fear because that's, uh, it's more of, you know, fear to me is something that we conjure up in our own minds. The person living that I admire very, very much is my mother, and I'll tell you why. She is a real example of never thinking of herself and always going out, helping the other person, making sure that the other person has many times when it means she has nothing. So, you know, that to me is the highest form of compassion and love one can share. And it just happens to be my mother. Um, some of that has come, although I, I can't even, you know, begin uh, to, to emulate, you know, where she is. I have taken a little bit of, of her example as a seed for me. And hopefully my children uh, will do the same. But uh, as for, you know, living historical figures, you know, there are, I love people who find cures. I love people who find or discover things that are truly, you know, a, a real boon for humankind. I love people like that who make the world better. I love musicians who, you know, share their goodness with the world and make us happy on a sad day. I love, you know, people in the theater, actors, uh, wh whatever it may be, because they're sharing their talents and making this a better world. So I love people who make this a better world. What is the trait you most deplore in yourself? Oh, I uh, deplore the fact that I say one thing and do another. <laughs> you know, the, the old, you hypocrite. <laughs> I find myself thinking that I won't do something, and there I go. I'm, I'm off on a fishing expedition doing just what I said I, I wouldn't do. Uh, although, you know, it's not uh, something that's out of control. It's just discipline. There, there could be more self-discipline in uh, the way I think, the way I live. What is your favorite journey? One of my most favorite journeys was years ago when my son Alex was a Boy Scout and we'd go to Camp Cash a lot. I loved those kinds of journeys. I loved it when we went white water rafting with his Boy Scout troop and had a chance to bond in a way that you know, made that journey very, very special and then go on to do other things. I loved uh, the journeys that I take with my daughters as well. You know, anything that brought us closer together, uh, we'd go to the uh, Caribbean. We'd take them uh, with us to Jamaica, to the Bahamas. Journeys like that with my family were very, very special, very meaningful because I was happy to share something that they never experienced but the flip side of that was that we were all getting stronger and happier as a family experiencing this together. So, you know, journeys like that have always been favorites of mine. I, I will add this, though. 
when I had my national radio show, doing a lot of remotes in different states, different cities, uh, brought me a lot of uh, pleasure as well because I could meet the listeners who tuned in every morning, whether it was in San Diego or in Houston or up in North Dakota. I liked those kinds of journeys as well because I got to meet folks who uh, made me a part of their lives. What do you dislike most about your appearance? I'm not at all, you know, vain in the sense that, you know, my hair is starting to thin out a little and starting to get a pot belly and half of me doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. So <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> what words or phrases do you most overuse? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely none, I don't think. <laughs> Absolutely none, I don't think. <laughs> Which talent would you most like to have? Which talent? I would have uh, loved to have learned piano. I, uh, from a young age, admired uh, pianists and uh, Jazz pianists like George Shearing, or you know, concert pianists. But I, I would have loved to have learned how to play the piano. My current state of mind is to try and put everything in proper perspective. As owners of a small business, my wife and I are constantly challenged with the uh, tests of time economically. You know, we're going through a very challenging and a very real uh, depression of sorts. And it's very difficult to try and make things balanced when you see that there are deficits. You know, people, instead of coming into your business twice or three times a week, are putting half of that money or most of that money into their gas tanks because the price of gasoline is you know, outrageous. So how do I balance my business when I'm finding, you know, deficits there and, you know, unemployment adding to it? So that creates, you know, somewhat of a, a shifting state of mind, but we're always looking for ways to try and balance things, to try and make things work. And uh, in time it does. It's just that lots of times you don't have a lot of time when you have to pay bills. I mean, everyone needs to be paid on time. So, you know, that's the um, challenging part of uh, owning a business. And that's what, of course, lends itself to having some stressful days and chaotic mind frames. <laughs> what do you consider your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement hasn't come yet. <laughs> I have accomplished quite a bit in my life. I have no formal education to speak of, and yet uh, I have sat face to face and interviewed people from the President of the United States to world acclaimed authors and musicians, movie stars and magnates. So in that sense, you know, I'm very proud of my accomplishments. Achievement wise, you know, I'm proud that from my humble beginnings, I was able to provide some foundation for my family through a business, through doing also things that I love to do so, you know, I could, you know, contribute that towards some of my uh, uh, accomplishments. But my greatest achievement hasn't come yet. What is your most marked characteristic? My laughter. <laughs> you know, people can be intimidated <laughs> very easily when I come around, because I'm very open, loud, physical, <laughs> I love hugging, 
And uh, lots of times people won't even look you in the eye uh, nowadays. So when you contrast, you know, something who is someone who is like that with somebody who is, you know, outrageously, you know, hi, how are you? It could be <laughs> a little bit intimidating. But uh, it is, you know, that's who I am and I understand it. And I understand when people are intimidated, I back off. I, I, I you know, usually pick up, I have sonar. <laughs> My most treasured possession is this, is a little band of gold. That's it. Because this uh, reflects many years of sacrifice, many years of ups and downs, many years of smiles, and many years of the tears. This symbolizes everything that my life is, uh, is made of. So this band of gold is my most treasured possession because it reflects more than anything all of the love and all of the hardships and all of the good things that have gone on in my life. It's all right there. 120 bucks. <laughs> Not a bad deal, huh? <laughs> How would you like to die? I don't care how I die. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Whether I go in my sleep, whether it's uh, in a plane crash with everyone saying, hold on, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and here's why it doesn't matter. I know and I believe in my heart and my faith that after this life, after this existence. I will go someplace else. So it's not a death. It's just a transition. It's a, a passing. Uh, this, this body falls asleep and then I go on uh, to what the Lord has in mind for me. So it doesn't matter to me if, you know, the, the, the mode of me dying. It really doesn't. And I'm sure a lot of people are saying, oh, yeah, you know, you don't want to suffer for a hundred years, uh, you know, with some kind of disease. Well, of course, you know, nobody wants to suffer a long time. But, you know, within reason, it doesn't matter how I die because it just doesn't matter. It has no weight. My motto is very simple. Do on to others. Be prepared that they will not do on to you, but don't allow that to change anything that you're doing for them. And dust off your ass once in a while when you fall down. <laughs>
we can install a nice deck in your back or side yard and then shade it with a sunsetter awning, screen it in, or enclose it to make it a three season room. The addition of a deck to your home can give you a little corner of paradise for barbecues, parties, or just relaxing in the evening. Stevens Home Improvement can make your house much more energy efficient with replacement windows, storm and entrance doors, and insulation to make your home much warmer in the winter, less drafty, and use a lot less oil, gas, or electricity for heat. Our personalized service, quality workmanship, and commitment to excellence make us the right home improvement contractor for all of your home improvement needs. Call us for a free no-obligation consultation at 508-997-9495 or visit our website at www.callstevens.com. That's Stevens with a V in the middle, callstevens.com.